If you're anything like me, you've probably had those days where you feel absolutely overwhelmed with dozens of things on your to-do list, that you feel paralyzed and don't even know where to begin. People tell you to focus on one thing at a time or do deep work, but that can feel impossible when everything else is just looming overhead. In this video, I'm going to share with you eight productivity habits from some of the world's highest performers and most successful people that I've picked up over the years that can help us to do more of what truly matters matters to us. These things aren't crazily complicated or insanely difficult. They're not about waking up at crazy early o'clock or exercising for four hours every day. They're actually a few simple proven keystone habits that have helped me to be more productive and I think they could help you too. If you're new here, my name's Izzy. I'm a Cambridge graduate and a doctor. On the side, I run this YouTube channel and also learn Mandarin in my free time, go to the gym, do yoga, hang out with friends and family. So these tips have really helped me to balance my lifestyle and get all the things that I want to do done. I've also started a newsletter. If you'd like to get more tips or hear about my weekly favorite things and any other life updates and resources, click the link in the description below to sign up for weekly bonus content. I've also made a free Notion worksheet as a companion to this video with prompts to help you implement the strategies I talk about regarding time management, brain dumping, and Eisenhower matrices, link down below if you're interested in checking that out. Tip one is to make your bed in the morning. I know that your mom has probably been telling you to do this ever since you were a teenager, but genuinely it is the first task of the day. And once you've completed it, it really sets you off on the right foot. In his book, Make Your Bed, former Navy SEAL William McRaven talks about how it can be easy to feel overwhelmed with a lot of tasks during the day. But if you get the ball rolling with one successful task, and no matter how simple, you can build that momentum and find the motivation to get started on the rest of your day. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. I used to be the kind of student in high school who would never make my bed. I tell myself that I was just going to crawl back into it at the end of the day and mess it up again, so I saw it as a kind of pointless task. But I've realized that something that you do doesn't have to last forever for it to be worthwhile doing. Things like eating or even showering, we don't expect that to last forever and that we only have to do it once, but it's still very much worthwhile doing so that we look after ourselves, stay nourished and smelling acceptable to our other fellow humans. So equally, making your bed is in this category of maintenance things that we do small steps to take care of ourselves and to show to ourselves that we matter. When I look back over the years, me starting to actually make my bed in the morning was also me starting to slowly change my life for the better. So I can't understate the gravitas and importance of this tip. Number two is brain dumping and intentional prioritization using an Eisenhower matrix. One problem that is really common is that we can get bogged down with the things that seem urgent every single day. There's always things cropping up that take our attention away from focusing on actually what's the big picture important thing for us to do. Whether that's an overflowing email inbox or a bunch of text messages asking you for things, that can take your attention away from maybe working on that long-term project or learning that language that's been really important to you. Dwight Eisenhower, who was a US Army general and also the president of the United States, once said, I have two kinds of problems, the urgent and the important. Separating these two and understanding that they are distinct is so crucial. The process of brain dumping and then intentionally prioritizing things looks like this. Sit down and write down a list of all the things that you want to do. This includes your email inbox. It also includes things that you want to do that aren't necessarily that urgent, like booking in for your dentist appointment, planning out that trip, learning a language, or starting your business. Then once you've done the brain dump, draw out a grid with four quadrants. Label each of the rows important or not important, and each of the columns urgent or not urgent. Pay extra attention here to the important but not urgent box, because this is the one that usually easily gets neglected in favor of urgent things. Often urgent things will very easily take over and dominate our mind space. So things that are both urgent and important definitely need to get done. Things that are urgent but not important they feel urgent, so they feel like they need to get done, but important but not urgent are the things that we can delay week by week, month by month, say, oh, I'll do that tomorrow, I'll do that next week because it's not urgent. Meanwhile, when it comes to the not important and not urgent box, you can just cross that off or just leave it somewhere in a drawer hidden far away that you never really have to look at again. This prioritization method was pioneered by Eisenhower himself during his time as an army general and the US president to help him sort and take on difficult problems. The actual matrix format was popularized by Stephen Covey in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, among several other experts.
excellent methods to stay productive during the day. You can also check out the rest of Covey's tips on short form if you're interested in a summary. After you've got your brain dump and your Eisenhower matrix and you've crossed some things off and highlighted some things that you really need to get done, set intentions for your day. So for me, I personally use my bullet journal. One practice that I've started using is the HRH method. Every single day I'll set a health, relationships and hustle goal for myself. So in health, for example, today I put do a yoga session. In relationships I wrote reply to messages because often I find myself procrastinating or re replying to my WhatsApp messages. And under hustle I put film this video among a couple of other things as well. The key thing is that I usually only put one thing in each category and so then as long as I've ticked off those three things for the day I know that I'm moving towards my goals. I find this really nice to combine with the Eisenhower matrix because then you see what's actually important to you and you recall actually where you're trying to go overall and then you can bring it back to the day to day but still remember that taking care of health, relationships and also some kind of hustle is the foundation of kind of a happy life I feel like. The third tip is a zero complaint commitment. So there is a big difference between making a complaint in a constructive way to create active change in your life and in your surroundings versus simply complaining to be negative and have a little bit of a wallow. Negative complaining is bad for our mental state and also for the mental state of people around us. Complaints and subsequent negativity promote the release of the stress hormone cortisol and via neuronal mirroring this often affects the people being exposed to our negativity too. It might feel good for a moment but turning to complaints as a first course of action in adverse circumstances can become a bad habit that you might not be able to get rid of very easily. Psychologist and author of the book Emotional Intelligence 2.0, Travis Bradbury talks about how complaining can rewire our brains for negativity. In neuropsychology, there's a theory of neuroplasticity known as Hebb's law, introduced by Donald Hebb in 1949, which can be summarized as neurons that fire together, wire together. This essentially means that habitual thought patterns become more strongly ingrained over time, as those connections are wired more strongly together with more use. Almost like walking a path through tall thick grass. If you've never done it before and that path has never been trodden, it's quite difficult to pick out a path and push your way through all the thick grass. But the more frequently that path is walked, the more it becomes clearly defined and easy to go down. Repeated complaining rewires your brain to make future complaining more likely. Over time, you find it's easier to be negative than positive regardless of what's happening around you. So here's an alternative. If a situation isn't as you wish it to be, you could challenge yourself to only have three options. Number one would be to remove remove yourself from it entirely. Number two would be to take active steps to change it, such as voicing the concern in a constructive and positive way with the intention of changing the situation. Or number three, accept it totally and unreservedly. Essentially surrender to it and embrace it. In his book, The Power of Now, which I'm currently rereading, I absolutely love this book, I highly recommend it, I'll link it down below. Eckhart Tolle talks about how full acceptance of a situation in the present moment is a form of surrender, which liberates us and gives us power over how we respond to that situation situation. So maybe try this surrender experiment next time and let go of any mental resistance and complaints that might be starting to bubble up. Dr. Travis Bradbury also recommends you maybe try to pivot towards something that you're grateful for whenever you feel that urge to complain. Working to cultivate this grateful attitude can significantly reduce the amount of cortisol in your body and also reduce your urge to complain. Tip four is to meditate. So many productive people and high achievers meditate. Athletes like Kobe Bryant, celebrities like Jennifer Anderson, Aniston, CEOs like Steve Jobs, investors like Naval Ravikant. Jennifer Aniston said that meditation is like a kickstart for your day. It centers you, your stress levels go down and you find yourself interacting in the world in a much easier and calmer way. Kobe Bryant once said, I meditate every day. It's like having an anchor. If I don't do it, I feel like I'm constantly chasing the day as opposed to being in control and dictating my day. I have a calmness about whatever comes my way, a poise. And that comes from starting my morning off with meditation. I personally started meditating around four years ago and even built up a sizable daily run streak on Headspace for a while of around over 800 days I think. I found myself feeling more equanimity, more compassion and self-understanding through meditation. Equanimity can be defined as an evenness of mind even in the face of stress which helps us to face the ups and downs of life without being overwhelmed by the roller coaster. Compassion meditations have helped me to feel more empathy and love towards both myself and also others and by sitting quietly with ourselves every day we understand our own mind and reactions better allowing us to be more conscious and intentional with our actions. One of the best ways to bring meditation more into your life is with the support of an app to guide you, such as Aura Health, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. I've recently been struggling a bit with falling asleep at night due to racing thoughts and stress and ruminating about things that have been going on in my life, and sleep is so crucial and fundamental to our health and our productivity. Aura is an all-in-one mindfulness and wellness app with thousands of meditations, stories, and
and so much more like CBT, life coaching, breath work, and spirituality. Their content is created by hundreds of different experts, coaches, and therapists from around the world. And I love the variety that they have in the app as there's almost always going to be something for everyone and every mood that you're in. I've mainly been using their guided meditations to help me relax and wind down before bed, particularly their sleep hypnosis sessions, which have been actually really helpful to calm my busy mind before bed. I've also been really enjoying their life coaching sessions. So you can choose from literally a huge range of coaches who can coach you on your health, your career, your mindset, and general life goals and how to get there. I found this really helpful because motivation underpins any productivity and any work and any progress we make towards our goals. If you'd like to try out the Aura app, feel free to use my link on the screen or down below for a 25% discount. Tip number five is time blocking. Cal Newport once said, a 40 hour time blocked work week, I estimate produces the same amount of output as a 60 plus hour work week pursued without structure. Time blocking is a practice where you essentially decide in advance what you'll do in different time blocks in the day. This gives your day that sense of structure. Studies have shown that time management techniques such as time blocking lead to increased success both in school and in the workplace. Planning out your time is one of the strongest correlated predictors for academic success especially. It both increases performance and also decreases stress levels, maybe because you know what's coming up. Interestingly, it's even more strongly correlated with an increased sense of well-being and life satisfaction overall, which suggests that actually this is such a good way of increasing our performance, decreasing stress, and just making us overall feel better about our lives, which is incredible. For several years at university, I would religiously do this in Google Calendar and block out all my time. Recently, I've been trying out an app called Structured for this. It's a little bit more aesthetic, but honestly, I think I'm going back to Google Calendar. You can't go wrong with it. Totally free, easy to use, what's not to love. Tip six is energy management. Energy management is something I talk about so much on this channel because it is so key. Developing an understanding of your own energy levels and knowing when to schedule what kind of intensity of work is the fundamental of self-knowledge and then being able to be productive with the time that you do have. Identifying the best times to do certain things helps to increase our efficiency when doing certain tasks, which overall improves our productivity with the time that we have. Just try to check in with yourself and see when you feel most awake, alert, productive. Do you benefit from setting time aside at the start of your day to take care of important tasks or do you prefer to stay up late and work into the night? Ask yourself these kinds of questions regularly and try to get an idea of how to manage your energy, when you need to have caffeine, what other steps that you can take in order to take care of your well-being. I have a full video about this somewhere over here which I will link. Tip seven is to prioritize the best free performance enhancer which is sleep. Maintaining proper sleep can improve your mood, help your memory and cognition, reduce stress. In other words, getting a good night's sleep will make you more productive than anything else in this video and anything else any other video could say. As long as you're getting enough rest, that is the foundation of any kind of productivity. High performers understand this and make sure that they protect enough time to sleep. This ties in closely with energy management because sleep helps us to feel more energized, which in turn allows us to be more efficient with our time, therefore more productive. Elite athletes like Usain Bolt and Roger Federer value their sleep so highly that they would sleep up to 12 hours a day. Eight to nine hours actually in bed overnight and then three more hours in strategically placed naps throughout the day. An Israeli study from 2018 showed that impairing quality of sleep such as by staying up using electronic devices leads people to feel sleepier during the day and perform worse on tests involving attention and concentration. And in 2017 Dutch researchers surveying students found that students who lose less sleep overall were more likely to have higher grades and have an easier time concentrating on material which isn't really a surprise. This is also intuitive. I know that everyone harps on about this, but it's so, so crucial. And I've actually made a whole video talking about all the steps that we can take from the beginning to all the way to the end of our day to help to maximize our sleep quality. I'll link that video somewhere over here. Tip number eight is recognizing that your self-worth isn't tied to how productive you are. There can be a lot of focus on and glorification of productivity these days, but your worth is not dependent on how much stuff you got done on a given day. And at the end of the day, remember Remember that taking care of your mind and body is the absolute foundation of everything that we do and how we show up in the world. I think we can also redefine productivity for ourselves. Productive doesn't mean working all day. Productive just means that you're doing something for yourself. Even by watching this video, you're striving to do something for yourself. So don't forget to take a moment to recognize and appreciate that and be kind to yourself. Again, if you want to put this video into action right away, you can use the link in the description to join the email list. We'll send you access to a free Notion template that will help you to implement time blocking, brain dumping, and Eisenhower matrices into your life as well as more weekly bonus content. If you enjoyed this video I think you might like this one over here where I talk about using your new efficiency skills to achieve your goals. Thank you so much for watching. As always take care of yourself and remember that the journey is the destination.
I'll see you in the next video. Bye!